Hi, Adam here. Wanted to talk to you uh, a little bit today, grab my uh, cup of tea. And um, as we've reached towards the end of the year, um, oh sorry, the calendar year, we're coming up to uh, the calendar year end. Um, some companies operate their financial year on the calendar year, some will operate it on uh, the financial year, so April through to March, so they'll be uh, thinking about their final quarters as well. And uh, this is the time of year where either you will have uh, looked at your current incentive plans uh, and redesigned ready for launch, or you are thinking about and you're going to get them ready to change from April. So having you know your new bonus plans or your new commission sales plans, incentives in place for the start of the new year is the most effective time to do it. Now, um, incentive plan work is one of the, uh, the most fun uh, to work on in reward, at least for me as you know, a massive data nerd. It's, uh, it's the most complex piece of work that you can do. Uh, well, commission plans are. Annual bonus, eh, not so. Um, and the thing is, they can seem uh, very daunting at first when you're trying to design them or put them together, but actually, in their kind of their bare essence, they're pretty straightforward. So every plan, whether it's a company's annual bonus plan, whether it's some sort of team incentive for a contact center, whether or not it's a salesperson's commission, uh, is ultimately driven by the same few factors, same few factors. So you're looking at a period that you want to pay it for. Typically, uh, this is sort of a monthly, quarterly, uh, annual sort of thing. Those are the big ones, but you know, other options are available. Um, so you want to know what period you're looking at. And then you want to know what you're measuring. And this is really, really key because every single plan, regardless of what it is, is only as successful as its measures. So they need to be relevant. They need to be something that can be influenced and they need to drive the success of the organization, whether or not um, you know, in the individual's work or uh, in the sort of the team's work overall. So many times over the years, seen organizations um, put in measures and then find the law of unexpected consequences. Uh, my absolute favorite from personal experience was seeing a company, they had their annual bonus and it was based uh, on profit of the company. And uh, one year they decided they needed to change it because they just had an extremely profitable year but with very poor sort of revenue performance. So they moved it onto revenue. And then the next year they had to full payout because they had very good revenue performance, but very low profitability. <laughs> so the following year, they finally combined the two measures and now you've got um, the profit and the revenue. So you have to be doing both, you know, you have to be growing that revenue, growing the company, but doing it in a profitable manner at the same time. One on its own is not as acceptable. And immediately, the law of unintended consequences. Um, if you tell people this is what they need to do to get money, they will do those things. It sounds straightforward, but you need to remember that they will do those things. And then anything that's not part of those measures, they're not being paid for it now or at least they're not being incentivized for it. So as I say, those measures are absolutely key. And then uh, sort of finally, it's deciding uh, sort of what amount of money to put onto it. Uh, and that can be a quite complex question depending on what you are trying to achieve. Um, simpler, if it's an annual bonus, you can kind of look at typical uh, rates in benchmarking surveys. Uh, if it's a team incentive, are you trying to drive additional performance? Are you trying to uh, give them performance for doing their regular job well? And yes, but sort of once you've got those basics, you know what you want to measure, you know how much you want to pay out and over kind of what period, you've got the basics of it. Now, uh, obviously, as with many things, it, it gets a lot more complicated after that. So for example, um, your target payment, what is that for? Uh, when should you give someone their target payment? Um, and the, the trite answer is uh, when they've delivered target performance. But again, what is that? So 
if you're offering an incentive, I've said, do you want it to be for delivering normal performance or above performance? So if you want to drive higher performance, then what you're saying is I would like to give you money if you achieve more than normal. So your target performance is above normal. Whereas uh, if you're saying, look, you know, I want to reward you for doing the day job and doing the day job well, it's very important that we get these right, then you would do it uh, at normal performance. So kind of what is 100% payout reflects something very different. And indeed, it's interesting to get that messaging right for your employees. Really struck me when I joined one organisation and um, I, I'd come from somewhere at the time, uh, my previous role, that had no bonus at all. Uh, or rather, sorry, that, that's not quite right. Um, it had a bonus and it was very much sort of boom or bust. So it's kind of either one year we'd get it all or one year we'd get nothing. Um, it was just the, the sort of the nature of the beast. And I came somewhere where they'd had, um, from my point of view, big payouts. Um, and so, you know, typically between sort of 80 and 120% of the target, which is, which is great. Um, but they had this year where the, the payments were more like 70% and people were massively disappointed. Um, and, and it was very difficult for me to understand coming from my background because it's just, yeah, that, that's, that's good. This is a bonus. The bonus is paying out. And yet, from their point of view, anything less than 100% payout uh, was disappointing. Uh, like, oh, how have we failed? 100% is what we should be getting for normal performance. So it's sort of lost some messaging for, for a lot of people. There are a lot of people out there who are also commenting and saying, hey, look, it's a bonus. Anything over zero is great. Um, you know, which is slightly nicer from a reward perspective to hear. Um, but at the same time, you know, you want people to be going, yes, we worked hard. We did it. We achieved it. And in terms of the success of an incentive plan, um, Yes, communicating it. It's the hidden part of incentive design, really. Um, it's less relevant for commission plans or for sort of uh, a team incentive that pays out more on a monthly or quarterly basis of like sort of uh, contact center wise, because often those are delivered, um, driven by key operational metrics. So often people are aware of them the whole time. Whereas in contrast with the annual bonus, so often I can see this just sort of wasted. Um, so companies can spend, uh, larger companies can spend millions, tens of millions on an annual bonus, but they don't talk about it through the year. And often this can be a very large chunk of money, but what are they getting for it? Because if people aren't thinking about it, then it's not influencing their work. And if it's not influencing their work, people are doing the same regular job that they are always doing. So are you getting anything different for it? Are you driving any higher performance? So if you have these key metrics and they're important to you and you want it to be driving higher performance, then you need to make sure that it is on people's minds, that they are staying informed about what those metrics are, about how you're going to achieve it and how they can make a difference towards achieving it. So, as I say, a lot of variables that get involved um, in incentive plans, uh, and that's just sort of the big top level stuff. But really, you know, if you're looking at it, to a certain extent, the amount and the period will sort itself out. So I'll just remind you that really the absolute key things are your metrics. They need to be something that is a true reflection of the organization's business, that are influenceable by your employees, by your people, that you have covered your bases against the law of unintended consequences, and that if you are incentivizing people achieving these things, that you are not uh, disincentivizing people doing other things of almost equal value. And if you are going to have these plans in place, Make sure they are well communicated. You are offering people this money to do their job better. Make sure they remember that it is there and it is available. Okay, well, thank you very much for joining me. Um, if you are redesigning your uh, plans, good luck. 
And uh, as I say, measure them and communicate them well. Cheerio.